right, hello everybody. Welcome to the world's greatest uh, podcast about TV shows made about superheroes. Cape Crusader. <laughs> just uh, rolls need to, off the tongue. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> our official tagline. This is your co-host, Michael. And I'm joined by Joshua Mervell. What's going on? Hey, and Bex Luthor. I am also here. Hello. Woo! And for our second episode, we decided to bring back one of our frequent guests. From here comes the Spider Cast, and that's Cousin Brandon. Thanks for joining us, Brandon. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so guess what? Last week we reviewed um, The Adventures of Superman. This week we're going to review the infamous Batman TV show from the 1960s starring Adam West. I'm sure we all have a lot to say about this, but since you're our guest, uh, Brandon, let's just ask you, for starters, what is your experience with this show in the past? So, I've watched the series multiple times. Uh, okay. I, I absolutely adore it. I think it is so campy and ridiculous and stupid, and yet so much fun. Um, so, this was not... This is probably the first time I rewatched these first two episodes in probably about like five years, I'd say. I think mm-hmm. in fact I own it on season one on DVD. Nice. <laughs> so yeah, this was a, a real a real treat. It wasn't like some of those bad comic books you made me read. Oh, there's or more of those to come. Yeah, we'll but, have you yeah. on another show. <laughs> but um, I'll just say I, I grew up with this show in the late 70s and early 80s, and I thought it was new, okay? So I was born in 76, but I thought this show was made for me. And when they re-released Batman the movie with Adam West and Burt Ward, I thought, again, oh, they're, they're going to make a movie in 1982? Cool, right? So I went and saw it at the theater. I'm like, this is awesome. And then years later, the Michael Keaton Batman movie came out. Now, the key thing about this is when the Michael Keaton movie came out, I did not know that the Adam West Batman show was supposed to be funny. I thought it was just... Like, oh, this show, that was the old Batman, now there's the new Batman. So then when I watched it when I was about 13, I was like, what the the fuck is this? I didn't remember anything. (laughs) It would be over-the-top, exaggerated, campy. So then I thought, okay, so is it bad? Is it good? And then a couple years later, I'm like, oh, it's intentional. I get it. Okay. So (laughs) as the years went by, I I appreciated the show more and more of how witty it was. and, And I have an all new appreciation for it because I think that you know, I love the Christopher Nolan Batman movies, but I think the further you get away from at least some of this campiness, it becomes less and less Batman, you know? Like, I, I love the new Riddler from the new movie, but I still like the Frank Gorshin Riddler. I've always said that if Frank Gorshin was alive today, he could still play the Riddler in a serious Batman movie, and I think it would kind of fit. But anyway, that's my experience. So now, going in order of age, I believe, Becca, you're next, right? Because I want to know, yeah, chronologically, I want to know... What? <laughs> Josh is the youngest, right? And cousin Brandon is the middle child? No, he's the oldest, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, see? It all works out. So, so Becca, just to give us an idea of when you were born. <laughs> okay. When you, when Let's were just you born? talk about a lady's age for a minute. Yeah, minute. exactly. Let's break all the social taboos. Back when you were born. You, I think. I know. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Back in the 40s, you know, when you were born. Um <laughs> So, Becca, when you grew up, did you think this was a serious show, a funny show, a parody? Uh, it was definitely not serious, um, mostly because Batman dances a lot. So mm-hmm. didn't think it was serious, but I definitely watched a decent chunk of episodes. Um, my partner was actually saying they had some VHS tapes with episodes on them that nice. they would just watch as a kid. I think right. a lot of kids in the 90s just had a weird collection of VHS tapes of like episodes of TV shows that they yeah. never saw the whole thing of. But we yep. just would watch the same episodes over and over and over again. I love this show. <laughs> oh, me too. You know what? I oh, remember... my God. Yep. <laughs> this is one uh, of my favorite adaptations of Batman to ever exist. I 100% agree. I remember, I, I think it was the night Batman premiered. I came home and on cable, they ran a marathon of Adam West Batman episodes and I recorded them. But it's like you said, it's like I recorded those five or six episodes and then I never got any more. <laughs> so then I just rewatched that tape a million times, you know, and then years later, I saw the rest of the show. But yeah, I agree with you. I'm a huge fan. And, you know, I love the Riddler. Um, favorite Batman villain by far. I love Frank Gorshin so much. He's always 
how like I read the Riddler's voice in when I read comic books is <laughs> is Frank Gorshin's voice. <laughs> yep. For sure. Um one of my first cosplays was one of Frank Gorshin's Riddler outfits. And I say one of because the costuming in the show is fantastic and he has mm-hmm. so many Riddler green themed outfits, but it was the the bodysuit with the big question mark on the front and the question marks down the side and the little, little um the little undies. It was that one. And I'm just I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. Literally still holds up. Comedy top tier. Yep. Very funny. Um, I think there's a part in this episode where they're like sneaking into a, a building and they like carefully and quietly cut the bars off a of window. <laughs> yes. And quietly move it to the side and then just shatter the window and jump through. And yeah, I was like, yeah. ah. it's so good. They it was even so have a- good. They even have a bat gadget to hang the yeah. uh, the bars up on the wall so it doesn't fall. Yeah. It's so great. The label maker that Batman oh, has that he labels yeah. everything with. Oh, everything in this show is just like camp and good and nice and fun. Mm-hmm. I agree. And I, agree. I love serious Batman. But I think serious Batman and this Batman could coexist. You, you can enjoy both types of Batman. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I don't want to watch Batman solve murders. Sometimes I want to watch Batman jump out of a, a paper mache mammoth. Yes. <laughs> <I know. laughs> and we'll talk too. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Yeah, when we get to the ap- actual episode, but I'm with you 100%. Um so Josh, tell us what's your what's your experience with Batman? Um so Adam West Batman, uh I've seen a few episodes of the show. But I would say that I'm actually extremely familiar with the movie. Okay. I watched the movie all the time as a kid. And then even growing up, I remember forcing my friends to watch it in high school. Mm-hmm. And the first, you know, 10 minutes of the movie, they're like, this is absolutely ridiculous. Like, why are we watching this? Right. And then by the end, it's like, it's so great. Everybody's laughing. Everybody's having a good time. Uh, the camp still holds up today, like Bex was saying, like the jokes mm-hmm. and the goofiness of it all, of, of it all, like still works. Um, so yep. I had a lot of fun uh, watching these two episodes and uh, uh, I kind of want to go watch more. I kind of want to go back and rewatch the movie, honestly. Well, I plan to rewatch the entire series now. Like I put off buying the Blu-ray box set, but I'm absolutely pumped. I'm going to buy it now. But before yeah. we jump into the review, let's I'm going to give a couple facts, a couple quick facts about the show, okay? So, this show was described by executive producer William uh, Dozier as the only situation comedy on the air without a laugh track. So, yes, it was intended <laughs> as a comedy. Uh, they originally created it to be a 1-hour show. But then the premiere date got moved from the fall to January, so they didn't have a full hour. They only had two half-hour slots, so they decided to split up the scripts into 30-minute installments and have a cliffhanger in between, which is where you get the infamous, you know, every first part of the episode of the the two-parter would end on a cliffhanger with someone being in a death trap and the infamous voiceover, you know, will Robin be rescued or whatever it may be. And so that's where that comes from, because it was the only show at the time that was two episodes per week. Uh, starting in the third season, they moved to one episode per week. And so they got rid of the two parters. Um, it was considered extremely popular and some consider it the biggest TV phenomenon of the 1960s. Um, near the end of the third season, rating ratings did drop. And ABC canceled the show. Apparently, NBC agreed to take over the series, but they contacted the studio too late, and ABC had already destroyed the sets. So, yeah, Ooh. there could have been more, but there wasn't. <laughs> uh, and we should also point out that before this episode that we're about to review, before it aired, the Riddler, I believe, had only appeared two or three times. He was a minor villain from the Golden Age. I think he was brought back once because they knew he was going to be in the show. And because what it, what the producers did was they went back and read all the old comics and they liked the Riddler. So, hey, if it, if it wasn't the Riddler, it might have been the Calendar Man or it might have been some other Z-list villain, right? But they picked the Riddler. And because of Frank Orson's performance, obviously now he's considered an A-list Batman villain. So, uh, oh, one more thing. Bob Kane also says that this TV show saved Batman from cancellation because Batman sales were not doing good around the time that the show came out. So, oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Very interesting. So we are going to talk about the first two episodes of the show titled 
high diddle riddle and smack in the middle. Oh, and by the way, I didn't know this. Apparently, all the two parters have titles that rhyme. If you go through the oh, oh really? Yeah, they all rhyme. Isn't that amazing? Never noticed that. So, so anyway, That's um, true. Who would like to do a quick summary of the first episode? Cousin Brandon, would you like to do the honors for that? I don't. I I drink. <laughs> no. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, no problem. We'll take it from here. Josh, would you like to do part one? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. let me pull up the let me pull up the thing so I can kind of scrub through as I'm describing sure. it, so I don't miss anything. Um, but uh, we start off and there's like an auction going on, and or not an auction. It's like a big celebration or something, and they it's bring the out a cake. Fair. It's, it's a World's the, Fair. Yeah, that's what it's supposed. And in fact, some of the footage is actually World's Fair footage. In that oh, opening. really? Yeah, that's really the outside cool. stuff. Yeah. Wait a minute. This is the first. I just thought you know that's the first podcast I've done with you guys where I actually took notes on my phone. There was so <laughs> many funny things that I was dying. I was like, I have to write this down. I don't want to forget. So if I interrupt you, go I ahead. Part, I, yeah. I apologize, but I can't lose this. So. That's totally fine. <laughs> oh, amazing. So. um uh, uh, they bring out this cake to celebrate and it explodes and inside of the exploding cake is this riddle uh, I believe the riddle is why is an orange like a bell hmm. um, I think the answer is they can both be peeled or something right? yeah but the thing is though we, I, if you don't mind me jumping in Josh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a thousand times the the riddle makes its way to Commissioner Gordon, and Commissioner Gordon looks at he basically reads it, and then he looks at his whole police force, and, and <laughs> hey. he looks at who's going to solve this riddle? Can you? Can you? And everyone kind of does like the the ashamed. <sighs> no, I think what he says, Mike L. He realizes it's the Riddler, and he's like, "Can you? Like, are you ready to take on the Riddler?" Okay, that's what it is, right? The Gotham Police are useless. Okay, that's, <laughs> that's my right uh, and just really quick going back just um this is for moldavian fiesta week okay <laughs> for the country of moldavia or Maldi whatever it is it seemed to be this like russian empire what the fuck is fiesta week in moldavia no well you cut out from what was it you said it was called it was a sign at the front of their display before the cake comes out Moldavian Fiesta Week. Okay. I, I'm pretty sure Fiestas are in Spain. And, yeah, you know, yeah. From it, Russian Empire. I, I don't know. <laughs> a little, a little but you me. know what? Yeah, I wasn't sure if yeah, Moldavia is a real country. I was never sure about that. It's in the Eastern Carpathians. Well, they're not having Fiestas. I'm just telling you that. Much. Yeah, they, um, they speak Romanian there. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> And also, by the way, too, about the police force before we get off this. And actually, my wife pointed this out, too, because I, I rewatched it with her. What's their success in plan? Every police officer in Gotham is like 60 plus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good point. Good point. Uh, to replace everyone? What's the plan? Terrible. That's a good anyway. point. Even Chief O'Hara, I'm like, I, <laughs> gee, I wonder why they never brought Chief O'Hara into the comics. And now I know why. <laughs> Just the guy that's kind of a like, boom. But anyway, oh, so they, they end up calling Batman and we cut over to him in uh, Wayne Manor. He's talking to uh, Dick, Dick Grayson and the two of them decide to help out uh, the police chief and they uh, jump into their costumes. They go down their labeled poles to go to the Batcave. <laughs> Dick and Bruce. And, I love it. Uh, yeah, they're labeled <laughs> and it says to the Batcave. Yeah. <laughs> the down. It's great. <laughs> By the way. <laughs> After they they pick up the bat phone, and then right. the, commis the, the commissioner is like, "We need your help, Batman." He's like, "Got it." And <laughs> just, just assume wait, anything. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Don't forget too. There. Okay. Okay. There's so much to unpack. It. Bruce Wayne is in the middle of this presentation, whatever he's giving, because he's part of some charity, whatever. So he tells them he has to go because he just remembered he has to take. Robin fishing. I don't, well, Dick Grayson. He has to take Dick on a fishing trip. Yes. This is, His young ward. He's going to diddle him. <laughs> I, it was very disturbing Lord. to me. I was like, I don't care for this. 
But who, who I mean, his aunt, I, he's an orphan. Why so is that, his aunt So that's there? Dick Grayson's Aunt Harriet. You can have an aunt and be an orphan. It just means yeah. parents are dead. So Dick Grayson's parents died, but huh? he has an aunt. You're a real character? But, she was introduced in the comics, I think, the same issue they killed Alfred. Because they killed Alfred in, like, 64. To Because in 64, Batman got the yellow circle. They killed Alfred. They got rid of the Batcave. And they did a bunch of other things to kind of, like, revamp him. And then in that same issue, they introduced Aunt Harriet. And then a couple years later, they're like, oh, crap, they're going to bring Alfred back in the show. So we bring back Alfred. And they kept Aunt Harriet. They brought back the Batcave. Wow. Yeah. So. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. So yeah, that's Dick's Aunt Harriet, and she obviously doesn't know that they're actually Batman and Robin. Clearly, yeah, cool. which 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 provides Bad for a lot intention. of comedy. Yes. Right. So anyway, Josh. So Batman Sorry, and Robin God. get into the Batmobile. No, 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 you, no, please. Uh, they get into the Batmobile. They head over to the police station, and they're talking to Chief O'Hara and uh, uh, Commissioner Gordon, and. Uh, they're trying to figure out what's going on. I can't remember how they, they figure it out. Well, All Robin, riddles just, make... Robin just figures out, yeah, you peel an orange and you peel a bell. And then they're right. like, ah, and the it... Peel Art Gallery. Right. Sure. Yeah. Sorry, how do you peel a bell? I still don't understand. I, I don't know if that's an old expression like, for like ringing a bell. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. I watched it twice and I'm like, I don't understand. And by the way, he's... Robin solves riddles too quickly. It, it's it only drove quick. me nuts. It yeah. drives me nuts. Yeah. But he is wrong most of the time, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I think you said that to him at one point, too. Anyway. Oh, by the way, apparently this is... Appeal is the special name given to a specific type of performance of change ringing. I don't even know what that means. Change ringing is the art of ringing a set of tuned bells in a tightly controlled manner. Okay, so it's like playing music. But anyway, I digress. Like Wow. It's like pulling the ropes of all of the bell, like you know those bell towers that have like fifty-five bells, oh, okay. and you have to pull them to make music. Oh, oh, that is okay. Thanks Look at that. Back. We're so well, we're so we're so well read here. <laughs> yeah, I didn't just Google it. <laughs> Tape Crusaders. Anyway, okay, go ahead, Josh. So they get to the Peel Art Gallery, and um, they. <laughs> Get another riddle, I believe, while they're there. He calls him on uh, the, the yeah. The he car calls phone. him on the bat on the <laughs> bat car phone, and it's pretty much like it's like the answer to the riddle is like a warning not to go through with it. It's uh, it was something about if three three men are in a canoe, uh, they have four cigarettes, cigarettes or right? Something. But and no lighter. How do they smoke? And, and then later right. on, Robin figures it out. Don't you get it, Batman? They throw one cigarette overboard and make the boat one cigarette lighter. Mm -hmm. Stupid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dumb, bad riddle, Riddler. Uh, so, so they scale the side of the building and they get to a window where they can see the Riddler is there with a gun. Right. And love pointing this. it at the jeweler who has this like big golden cross. <laughs> and Batman and Robin assume that he's getting robbed. So they very slowly and carefully um, uh, with his, with with Batman's bat metal cutter, like welding gun, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> chops the the grates of the window off. And instead of throwing it off like we were talking about before, he uses another tool, his bat suction cup hanger, <laughs> and he puts it on the side of the wall and he hangs the. He delicately hangs the, the bars so nobody gets hurt below, and the two of them crash through the window. It's awesome. fantastic. Wait, I love what it. Is, what, what is Batman's say to Robin? He's like, hold it, friend, public safety or something like that. Like, safety first. Yeah. That was yeah. Sorry, so Batman. I love that. Yep. <laughs> so we great. gotta be subtle about this. <laughs> <Then>. So <laughs> they crash through, and immediately they tackled the Riddler to the ground, <laughs> and they put him in handcuffs, and a bunch of guys storm in and they start taking pictures and uh, Batman and, and Robin both look a little confused as to what's happening. And it turns out that the Riddler set them up. He actually owns that cross <laughs> and the gun that he had was a fake gun that was actually a lighter that lit when you pulled the trigger. So they f so he framed Batman into falsely arresting him so he could take him to court and he even had the like 
court papers ready and rolled up and tied up in a nice little ribbon and handed it to him. So that's kind of where our conflict starts uh, in this. So Ra- uh, so the Riddler is able to um, go free. He, he gets out of his cuffs and he laughs and knocks over a bunch of stuff while he's in there. I don't know why he didn't get maybe get arrested for that, too. Mm-hmm. But uh, so then. Um, Bruce and Dick are back home and they're kind of thinking, like, what the heck are they going to do? Um, and they're looking at the papers and it turns out that there's some riddles in the actual like court documents. So well, they start. Rob- I just got to say, because Robin figures out, he's like, remember what Riddler said that there's more riddles to come. And think about it. Where can we look? And it's actually on the paper. He guesses right. that they're on the paper they already have, right? <laughs> right. So they go to the back computer and they start the computer to figure out what the the riddles are. And the first riddle is something about like what time does a does the train always come in and it's Two two. two two when it's two, two to two two to two to two, 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 two. <laughs> so and then the, the, the second <laughs> one it. the second one was about like acorn street or something right no, or, no, no it was something about what happened what have has like four fingers and a thumb but something not your oh, hand i don't a glove uh, and then it was a glove and, glove, then, and like, then it was glover street no it was two, no, it's two, 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 two glover avenue yeah. and then they jump <laughs> in the batmobile and they take off so ridiculous like, oh, yeah. So Just the worst riddles, but right. <laughs> it was in my note. <laughs> so we, so we uh, are introduced to his goons who live in a sewer under the subway. I love and it. They're there smoking some cigarettes, playing poker, and the Riddler comes <laughs> down and he says, "Like we gotta hurry up. Uh, our plan's about to 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 start. Batman's got the riddles. We gotta get going." So. Batman and Robin roll up and it turns out that it's a nightclub and Robin has to stay behind in the Batmobile. But no worries. He's able to pop the satellite open on the Batmobile and somehow get live footage far to the Batmobile. This is a convention of all TV shows where there's cameras everywhere somehow. (laughs) Right. right? And they can just see everything. Yeah. Right. By the way, you you glossed over um, in the in the lair for the goons. Her giant jar of caviar, That's which is yes. amazing, amazing. Uh huh. Yeah. That's caviar, by the way. Oh, what like, is this? So think about it. Caviar is usually a little tin, and it's like very expensive. I bet that's like a five dollar jar of caviar that made her shit her pants. <laughs> <laughs> like, that, it could not have been healthy to have that much disgusting caviar. There's right. no so, way. So Molly, Molly had already eaten a half a jar of caviar. <laughs> So Batman comes into the bar, <laughs> into this bar, and everybody is staring at him. He just walks in the front door. Of, yeah, sways over to the to the bar, and he orders a fresh glass of orange juice. No, no, I, I, I gotta say no, but the way it's done is, is is so beautiful because they have Batman. What can I get for you? And his face is away from the camera, and he's like, "A large, fresh orange juice, please." So great, fresh straight. Juice. Yeah, I love it. Did, did anybody clock the name of the bar? Because it did have a really funny name, and I can't remember what it was. I can't remember. It's the What a Way to Go Go Discotheque. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Mike. Thank you. Uh, I, great name. Uh, that's awesome. Amazing. So, uh, it, and it turns out he bumps into Molly at the bar, and she starts talking to him and actually gives him a riddle. And he's like, oh, where did you get that riddle? Must have learned from a master. And then she convinces him to go dance. So he downs his special uh, bat cocktail <laughs> and and uh, they start dancing. Uh, we cut back over to Robin. Wait, wait, you missed the most important part of the episode. Oh, Adam that? West invents the bat. Yeah, he I was invented say. it what? on the spot. And it became no. a national dance craze. <laughs> and I thought the whole time growing up as a kid, I thought the Batusi was just a thing that people did. I didn't realize Adam West invented it on the spot. And it was oh even my. used in Pulp Fiction. Remember when John Travolta is dancing? No way. Yeah. Yeah. He invented that on the spot. He's like, well, how would Batman dance? And so he just invented it on the spot. That's how would no Batman dance? freaking in way. What? Yeah. That's amazing. I had that, no that, idea. That yeah. scripted. I had no idea. Mm-hmm. Wow. 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 Okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> I, I didn't realize that was invented 
right here. That's yeah. that's crazy. I had assumed that it was know, just. Did you know Molly? I think was a Bond girl. Oh, yeah. That would really? surprise me. Yeah, on Her Majesty's Secret Service. Oh my <laughs> God, that's the best one. Wow. Okay. <laughs> well, there you go. We to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, anyways, Josh. <laughs> okay, so we cut back to Robin, and I can't remember exactly what happens. He is getting distracted because a bunch of cars are moving around. Oh, he's also watching Batman dance, so he's amused. <laughs> and he's and that's yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> that's when the, the Riddler pops out and, and sees uh, uh, Robin in the car. We cut back over, and it turns out that uh, the Bat cocktail was laced with some sort of uh, drug. Roofie. Yeah, some sort of roofie. So he, <laughs> he collapses on the ground. <laughs> and we cut back over and uh, the Riddler is like shooting at Robin and he I think he hits him with like a blow dart that knocks him out. So they yep. capture Robin and the Batmobile has a bunch of like defenses that start happening. So like fireworks start shooting out. So then they start they, they try to destroy the Batmobile and the Batmobile kind of fights back and then they end up giving up and running away. But they now have Robin. Batman. uh who is like drunk essentially <laughs> stumbles oh, out of the bar. I never and caught tried, that joke when I was a kid. Yeah. I tries didn't... to like argue with the police that he's okay to drive because he needs to go find Robin <laughs> and they convince him, no, 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 that's not going to work. So <laughs> they look up into the sky and the bat signals up. So they've got to go to the police station now. So we cut over to Robin. He's tied. Uh, he's tied up on this like table in the bad guys layer layer under the sewer. And the Riddler and Molly have some sort of, evil plan that they're going to be using uh, Robin for. And that's kind of where our cliffhanger ends, I believe. I don't think we see Batman at the police station yet. No, that's it. But I also got to point out a, a minor detail. Did yeah. you notice that the bat signal on the police headquarters does not match the bat signal in the sky at all? Yeah. It's what? completely it's different. different shaped. Completely. Oh, yeah. And it's wow. like almost, I, I wonder if it's so bad it's intentional, but anyway. So, yeah, that's where we get the infamous narration. You know, will Robin, is this the end of the King Will Crusaders? Robin escape? Can Batman find him in time? Oh. Is this the ghastly end of our dynamic duo? Answers tomorrow night, same time, same channel. Right. And One hint, the worst is yet to come. Awesome. It's and not. also, yeah, <laughs> but we also got to point out at this point, they hadn't incorporated the same bat time, same uh, bat yeah, channel. Right. Yeah. You'll also notice a few other weird things in the show, like sometimes when they have the, the scene transitions, they don't have the music cue that, you know, you know, da -da -da -da, or whatever the music cue is, they don't have it. There's a couple other little oddities in this first episode that they didn't figure out yet. But also the yeah. opening music, you know, the, the horn, you know, the stabs, there, boom. Yep. Later on, they, they change them and they, they match them up with the sound effects. In this uh, episode, they're over Batman's face. It's just like, Batman, bam, boom, and it doesn't match up with anything. <laughs> so every, anyway, they were figuring it as they went along. But So yeah, that's the first episode. Can I can I just point out one other thing? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, you, you had mentioned about the fireworks going off in the car. I, I, I looked at the episode on IMDb. Apparently, Robin was injured. Like he he had suffered severe burns. Really? From the pyrotechnic wow. in the very first episode. Yeah. Wow. I'm not surprised. There's a lot of um explosions in this yeah. episode. Yeah. Like a lot of doors bursting open and like just a, yeah. like the, these last two episodes, there's like a lot of explosions. Mm -hmm. safe. No. And by the way, one, one one last one other thing I had in my notes. I again I drunkenly was taking notes watching this and I was trying to type in Bruce is a pedo, and somehow he writes, Bryce is a peso. <laughs> okay. So, that's... Just that's why I... Okay. I don't anyway. think they use pesos in Moldavia, mm -hmm. but... <laughs> they do, Fiesta. The, sh the show might... But they do. It all might, comes around. So. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so but. part two, Josh... So uh, we get a recap, obviously, at the beginning, and then we jump into the episode. Batman is calling Commissioner Gordon and or sorry, Alfred and trying to figure out what's going on. We cut over to uh, the secret base and they're doing something to Robin. We're not quite sure. They've covered his face in in like plaster and there's like tubes coming out of the face we're led to believe and some sort of evil plan is is afoot so uh 
Robin, even though he's tied up loosely, is arguing with the Riddler and Riddler's like, you're, you know, Batman doesn't have, doesn't stand a chance. Um, and I got to point out, Frank Gorshin's acting there is exquisite when he's like, great, you're yeah. scared. You're scared. I don't remember what the line is, but like, he's actually just such a great actor. And that's the scene right. where it really comes through there. He's such a weirdo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Riddler ends up calling the police station looking for Batman and they try to record the call and they let Robin get on the phone and Robin's like, I'm alive, Batman, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and I think he even says like where to meet him, right? Or where they are or like gives him like a fake address. Right? I don't remember. Well, but it's weird. I don't remember that, but I remember it's weird because Commissioner Gordon it takes the call Commissioner Gordon calls the operator and tells the operator to record the call for some reason. And right. and when he picks up the phone, he just says, operator, put us all through. He doesn't say, hi, this is Commissioner Gordon. Hi, we're going to call Batman. He just says, put us all through. He traces the call. Yeah. Um, but it turns out that their secret plan is they created a perfect prosthetic of Robin's face that they're putting on Molly to disguise herself as Robin and go back to the Bat Cave with Batman. And then while there, she is going to try and kill him. So, hey, can we, can we, yeah, you have to you have to explain how they do this disguise. <laughs> oh, it's flawless. Well, what do you mean? Like they put the well, Molly, the actress playing Molly pretends to put a mask on You'll they cut away well, and sure. when they cut back all of a sudden it's burt ward it's just burt ward right? yeah. <laughs> yeah we don't actually there's no actual prosthetics going on right walking it's, like it's, the actress who plays molly walks right. <laughs> it's like they haven't seen face off no. yeah. right. <laughs> so they f they fake this like fake uh like handoff i guess kind of thing and there's like riddlers driving in the car with molly dressed as uh Robin in the passenger seat and uh, he ends. they like stage this car crash. And in this car crash, Molly pretends like her vocal cords were her in the crash. So she doesn't speak, revealing that she's not actually Robin. Right. So Batman quickly gets her into the car, goes back to the Batcave and immediately reveals uh, that it was her. And of course, Batman's already figured this out by now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, he's too smart. He's and so she pull she takes off the mask and he she pulls the gun on. She pulls a gun on him. And it turns out he's already thought that through, too. He used his mini bat laser to burn love. off the firing <laughs> piston in the gun. I love it. While she was distracted at the car. So, Distracted? Like what? What else was she doing besides looking at Batman? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so she gets scared for some reason. Like Batman's like, you can't shoot me. And she's like, ah, 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 and freaks out and <laughs> turns around <laughs> and runs up the scaffolding in the back of the, the, the bat cave. And Batman's like, don't worry, I'll save you. I'll save her? <laughs> she just ran up the scaffolding. So he uses his batarang and and grappling hook to climb up instead of the ladder that she just used yeah good point and is too, way too late and she gets too scared and ends up falling into a big vat that is like a like radioactive a reactor radioactive, like a like a giant it, it, it's wild how all of this happens and so quickly like but can i but can i also point out sure yeah that has ever happened on TV, like ever, I, I watched it. I was like, "What the fuck is happening?" That's what here? I mean. And what, 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 it made no sense. Yeah, but, it didn't uh, make but any in sense. the middle of this light comedy, fun adventure, this sad, tragic death. There's nothing funny about the scene. This girl <laughs> well, just falls into a nuclear pit. <laughs> And screams and gets vaporized and dies. And I'm like, it's like scarred me as a child. I'm like, why is and that? Then, awesome? And then Batman goes, if only she would have let me save her. And it's like, <laughs> fuck only. you. Oh, my God. That's true. That's also a great point. I, I think, by the way, this is the only person who ever died on camera on Batman. This is, it's, that's it. Oh, really? I don't know. I know that. The show. Really? Yeah, okay. I, mean, was, I think that was on IMDb as well. But wow, it's so weird. I, I know that it's sometimes Catwoman would fall to her death, but then she'd just show up like a couple episodes later. It's yeah. fine. Right. My it's fine. 
Don't worry about it. She's got nine lives. It's good. Right, yeah. but, and the cat always lands on its feet, Michael. There you, you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so, okay. Sorry, Josh. So she's dead now. Yeah. Um, and uh, they're left. The, they they don't know what to do. Like Batman doesn't know what to do anymore because he thought he saved Robin, but he couldn't. So he goes back to the police station and they they're listening back to the recording to see if they can hear anything. And there's no there's no riddles. So Robin seems to be lost forever until Batman notices some subway uh, traffic in the background. So he's he realizes that they must be near a subway. So he asks Commissioner Gordon to get all of the subway routes and schedules. schedules yeah. And he tie, he like figures out when the recording was and he matches them up so he can figure out where it could possibly be their hideout. Because there's only one train. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that based on right. New York City essentially too? I'm, I'm like, uh, to yeah. I don't think there's more than one. Probably. So but okay. Uh, they they walk out to the, the all together. They walk out to the Batmobile, and luckily in his trunk, he remembered to pack his mobile crime computer that oh, tracks yeah. that <laughs> tracks the subway stations. So he's able to (laughs) slip in the little note with the schedule and this mobile crime computer connects back to the base at the uh, through radio through the radio. He says this. (laughs) I love it. He's able to figure out when when uh, when the the schedule was and and where the base could possibly be. So. um, He tracks them down and he like uh, he places some explosives on the door and as Riddler is like talking and monologuing to, to Robin and he's about to punch him in the face, the door blows up and Batman barges through and he throws a batarang and ropes up the Riddler and he falls through a wall. And very quickly, the Riddler stands up and puts up a bulletproof glass door that slides through and blocks Batman from capturing the Riddler. And he grabs the biggest Sharpie pen you could possibly imagine. And he draws a question mark on the window and runs away. And Batman is helpless. He can't, he I can't go it. after. I love him. it. So, um, there's still, uh, there's still this plot of like what the Riddler is trying to do. What is his end game? And they f- figure out that, um, that with, with a couple of like, pre- there's a, there's a riddle about the president's, president with the biggest hat it must and be the soup. one with the biggest head and another stupid riddle yeah and yeah. what was it back then? sorry something about soup soup i can't yeah, i can't remember what i can't remember was. that one yeah i can't either but they they find they figure out that it's it's back at this back at the building that uh, oh no no it's it's something with inside and outside that's uh something about the circle uh how many sides does a circle have and dick says soup. don't you get it an inside and outside so he's going to rob the bank on the inside and take the money outside. That's what the <laughs> first guess is. <laughs> and then Robin's like, I got it. And then Batman's like, yeah, all right, let's go. Uh, okay. You yeah. mean uh, outside where you typically take the money after you? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <Right. Cool. laughs> and I, I don't really quite understand this. It looks like the World's Fair is still happening at this bank. <laughs> no, so Robin thinks so, it's the bank, but then... Batman later reveals that Robin was wrong and it's right. actually the this World's Fair thing. Okay. Uh, so Riddler and his goons, they pour laughing gas into the building where this like ceremony is happening and gases everybody up. He shows up with a gas mask and everybody there thinks he's a comedian because they're all laughing. So he's easily able to stuff the mammoth full of the stuff he's trying to steal, which is he's trying to steal the mammoth. The, gems, the mammoth is full of stamps. Stamps on the inside and <laughs> gems on the outside. Yes. That's where the inside and outside yes. that comes in. And he That's wants right. the mammoth. He wants he also wants the mammoth. Of course yep. he wouldn't. And uh <laughs> it turns out that Batman and Robin figured this out already. So as they're pulling the mammoth out of the building, they actually crash out of the mammoth. And it's a Trojan mammoth. 
Mm-hmm. And <laughs> Batman and Robin um, punch the bad guys until they win, essentially. There's lots of pows and booms and bangs. Um, mm-hmm. The Riddler ends up trying to escape and jumps through a giant hole in the ground. And Batman jumps after him. And the Riddler pulls out a gun and, sh- and starts shooting frantically. And he shoots one of the canisters that was, like, pouring the gas into the thing. And there's a huge explosion. And presumably the Riddler is dead. So uh, Batman and Robin are talking. Uh, Bruce and, and Dick are talking now at uh, Wayne Manor. And Robin is kind of like, gee, it's a shame the Riddler died. He couldn't get any justice in jail. And Bruce is, says something like, well, the police couldn't find a body, so he's probably not dead. And then the the episode ends with Bruce saying, darn, that Molly sure was hot. I wish she wasn't so evil. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I could have like turned her to the good side as credits roll. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay. So there's a lot to unpack here. Uh, we are going to go through the whole cast, but um, I'll just say that as an actual scripted, you know, piece of television, this show is genius. Um, it, I've seen a lot of the episodes of the show. This is one of the better ones for sure. Um, I don't know what to say about it. I mean, I think this is one of the best adaptations of a superhero ever created. And I, like I said earlier, I think that th- like we, we, we reviewed the Superman show last week and I love the Superman 50s show, but it's almost a little bit too serious. As I pointed out, they never brought in Lex Luthor. There was no Brainiac, no Mr. Mixes Pitalik. This show brings everything out and puts it all on the table and it puts it right in your face and it's awesome. And even, you know, when, when Tim Burton did his sort of semi-serious Batman movies, he still had the Joker with a with a green and purple car and he still had the penguin with a giant rubber ducky, right? And, it, and then when Joel Schumacher did his movies, we had Two-Face with the, the room that was half evil and half mm-hmm. good. And uh, to me, if you take all this stuff out... Jim it's, Carrey. Yeah, and well, Jim Carrey. Actually, Jim Carrey was okay as Riddler. He was I okay. I love Jim Carrey. Yeah, he was fine. But again, it's like I like serious Batman, but you got to have some of this in there, or it's not Batman anymore. So mm-hmm. I have nothing but good things to say about the show. Uh, Cousin Brandon, what would you think of this episode? Uh, again, I thought they were both great. I, I loved it. It, it, it. It's such a fun watch, and it's so over the top and so ridiculous. That I don't see how, like, in other words, you potentially see as some like somebody maybe watching it for the first time, potentially disliking it, saying well, that's not my Batman. But I mean, if somebody watched it as a kid and to revisit it, what is not to like? It is so much fun. Right, it's just fun to watch, and and yeah, I I adore it. I think it's great. The other thing too is, you know, when I was a kid, comic books were not cool. And so I went through that phase where, you know, I didn't want to, I didn't want people to associate comic books with the Adam West Batman because comic books are serious. And so when the Tim Burton movie came out, I was, I was like, oh, this is justifying me reading superhero comics. But now that it's been so many years since the Batman TV show, we have to just accept that it sure it, it made a, it, it was a parody of Batman, but it was so well done. Just accept it. It's a part of Batman's history. It's a giant part of Batman's history, right? So, uh, Bex Luther, what do you think? No, it's fantastic. Um, and like like I said, you can have serious Batman, and you can have this Batman, and they can coexist in the same universe, and that's fine. I fully believe that type of Batman is valid. Um, and I like every type of Batman. I like the dark, gritty Batman. I like when Bruce is sad and a brooding emo boy. I like when he's a good dad. I like when he's a weird dancing guy. Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. It's just the many facets of Bruce Wayne. Um, no, this show, everyone should watch it because it's just really funny. Uh, even if, like, like, and also, there's so much love put into it. Like, these mm-hmm. people genuinely like these characters. Like, Frank Gorshin's Rob, or Riddler, is at most times he's genuinely scary. Yeah, he's like exactly. unhinged. Yeah, and like when he's like with Robin, it's like scary. Like, yes, like copper this... and blue velvet. Like he's right. Kind of like I agree. You yeah. absolutely like if if this was the type of Riddler that was in like a really dark and gritty Batman, I think it would genuinely be terrifying. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but he's also has like some of the freshest outfits, which I appreciate about that. The <laughs> costuming in this show alone yeah. is is breathtaking. I just that love green everyone's turtleneck. The green turtleneck, uh, Robin's flesh colored leg tights <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. because he couldn't which, just be in his undies. <laughs> which Riddler did you like better, though? Do you like the the one you were describing for the cosplayer or the top hat? When he's uh, robbing I, me? I, I like love the, t- the top hat one, but yeah. also mm-hmm. the last one where he's got the purple checkered top suit. hat with the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was okay. weird. I forgot about that fit. suit. Yeah, that's a okay. fresh fit. Yeah, he's got three <laughs> costumes in two episodes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Pretty good. What a dapper man. Um, but yeah, there's so many little things in these shows that are just so funny. Like Robin hides it. It says like uh, like the car, the bat car alarm, and he covers it with a different label that says like the the fire activator or something. Oh, no, it was it was like the start button. Yeah. So that when they got in, they hit that. They were like, yeah. ah, that's the start button, but it was like to alert the police. Um. There was some weird parts, like the whole using Robin's face and like that car scene. And then when they go to the middle of nowhere and like to bring Robin back to the back cave, I think that was kind of clumsy. It looks at it felt a little fillery, mm. but for the most part, pretty great. <laughs> I it's agree. Also crazy how much happens in these two episodes. Yeah, like so much happens, but it all like weirdly fits together like I think maybe the style of the the storytelling and how campy it is really mm. kind of helps. Sure. Um, you kind of believe that these you believe in this like deranged world that that you're seeing because it's not real life. You know right. what I mean? Like it's not based in any sort of reality, but it, it's so fun. Um, and I, I didn't think it was going to hold up as well as it does honestly and it it's really still very funny well the key is that the yeah like the creators were smart and they knew how to write and they knew how to write comedy right and they they had an affection for the comics like becca said they really love what they were doing and besides all the comedy again as a kid a kid probably doesn't realize it's it's a parody but you're watching the show and talk about bringing a superhero comic to life like everyone loves the batmobile right yeah. And then you have the back computer and the back cave and the nuclear power source. And, um, you know, even that shot of the Batmobile pulling up to the police headquarters and they're getting out and running in. Like as in a the, kid, in the everybody's front, in the like daytime in the broad in the daylight. In the front. But as a kid, there's something about like Becca said about the costumes. These costumes are great. In fact, there's yeah. the, ta- and you know, we I always love when they have superheroes just interacting with re- normal people. Like in Superman three, when Superman flies to that place where the fire is, that I don't know, it's like a laboratory. And I remember the scientist is like, "Oh, hey, Superman," and he just keeps going. He's like, he explains, "This is what's going on." Just like in this episode, Batman he goes somewhere and he's walking by someone, and someone says, "Hey, Batman," and he's like, "Hi." And I just love this idea that these people are just walking around in these spandex costumes and it's just completely everyday normal. I love it, you know? Yeah. Um, but anyway, why don't we quickly go through, we're going to save the best for last, but let's go through the cast of this episode. I mean, I wish we could talk about the whole series, but we'll focus it on just this one episode. Starting from the worst, let's talk about Madge Blake as Mrs. Cooper. Aunt Harriet. Oh. <laughs> oh, come on. No, no, no. To be fair, she's fine. She's fine for what she is, right? Yeah. She's I don't just have like, anything to say about her, but. She's almost she's, the background character in this. Yeah. yeah, she's unnecessary. But she's fine. Yeah, she's fine for that role, that little c- comic relief. Um, and just feel free to jump in if you guys have any comments. The next sure, one yeah. I was going to mention is, I never knew his name until today, Stafford Rep as Chief O'Hara. Becca, why has Chief O'Hara not been in the comics? They've never... Uh, all of those police officers were the same white guy to me, so I don't know okay. who, even who you're talking about. <laughs> I was like, ah, yeah, the incompetent why. police. There they are. But yeah. it's also... Cops, by the way, are stealing Gotham taxpayer money. They're yeah. not stealing anything. <laughs> <They're> using... <laughs> true, true. Uh, Well, that's the whole argument about superheroes in general, but that's a whole other thing. Also, I got to point out, there was this weird cliche in Hollywood of cops all having Irish accents. I I mean, I'm sure there was a higher percentage of Irishmen in the police forces back then. I just don't know why. I don't know if it's like a blue collar thing. I have no idea. Yeah, Um, I I feel like we can talk about 
Gordon and O'Hara in the same breath because they're the same exact character. Yeah, they have no personality. Even but yeah. throughout the series, they're practically yeah. the same in every episode I've seen, at least. Sure. And in the movie, too. They're both like bumbling dum-dums <laughs> that yeah. he's Batman for, for everything. So but, but you know I'm confused fun- why, they, why they have two. That's they have a good two. point. But maybe they think so they can talk to each other, maybe. You know, yeah, just think it makes it easier to write. But the thing is, is the thing I love about Neil Hamilton as as Commissioner Gordon, it's like he's does he's not aware he's in a comedy. It's like uh, he's like what's his name? Um, the naked guy from Naked Gun. What's the lead right. actor? Uh, oh, uh, Leslie Nielsen. Leslie yeah. Nielsen. Either this guy Neil Hamilton is a is like a genius Marlon Brando level actor, or no one told him <laughs> he was in a comedy because he compl- he play, he plays it completely I think straight. It's the latter. It's yeah, the latter. yeah. <laughs> There's no way. Like he's playing a, like, you know what? This is gonna get me back into you know that Oscar yeah. territory potentially. <laughs> like, yeah, back in the running. Oh uh-huh. man. Okay, so let's talk about the lovely Jill St. John as Molly. I thought she did a great job. Perfect for this sure. episode. Unfortunately, yep. it's her only appearance. <laughs> oh, oh my God, oh, she um, is breathtakingly beautiful in such a yeah. classic way. Shout out to her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah she is. Woman. Yep. Absolutely. And uh, like Cousin Brandon said, she was in Her Majesty's Secret Service, uh, as well as some other movies. I'm looking up here, The Lost World, uh, other movies I haven't heard of. But yeah, I'm sure she was around doing a lot of stuff then. But yeah, she was fine. Also, I didn't realize this till someone pointed it out. She probably inspired... Carrie Kelly? Yes, as the uh, Robin in The Dark Knight. I was going to say, because I've seen clips of this online. Um with her dressed up as Robin. And I had s- assumed that, oh, that character's origin must have been from the show. Right. Because I, I had just assumed that Molly was a version of Robin in, in the original TV TV show. But um, yeah, they look almost identical, like down to like the orange bob and everything. Right, right. 100 so. percent. Yep. Um, okay, let's talk about Alan Napier as Alfred. I thought I think Alfred's perfect, perfectly cast. Apparently, before this show, he'd never really heard of Batman, didn't know anything about it. So again, he didn't get the memo. He do he just plays it completely <laughs> straight, and he's great at it. I love it. It's funnier that he's the only one that's like, "What the fuck are you guys talking about?" Right, right. Half right. the time, where he's like, "Whatever, Master Wayne, have some tea." Like, yeah. I love that. I love that he's the only one not in on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like everyone else is insane. See, this is the key thing I've always thought about the difference between British British actors and American actors. A British actor will be handed a script like, well, okay, this is a good script, but when a British actor is handed a bad script, they still treat it with complete respect. American actors kind of go, okay, I'm just doing this for the money. I'm just going to play it up as a joke and kind of wink at the audience. But I find that British actors never do that. Hmm. I find they respect the craft more than American actors. Speaking of actors that don't respect the craft, Burt Ward is Robin. No, just kidding. He's <laughs> fine. You he's shut fine. your mouth. He's fine. But he clearly knows he's, this is a send up. Like, um, Becca, tell us, what do you think of Burt Ward as Robin? He is a gem. And he gave us the phrase "Holy Roller Coasters, Batman," and I will never hear any slander against him. <laughs> Best Dick Grayson ever, I, for yeah, sure. I, I, I'll say this, Michael. I don't know if I agree. I again, I kind of feel like he's some young kid who's probably playing this. Like the script is ridiculous, and the things he has to say are ridiculous, but like. I don't know. I don't think he's playing it in terms of like, ah, this is funny. I think he's acting. <laughs> it's it's a very fine line. I know what you're saying. I, I don't think that he's looking down on the material at all. It's just that he's overacting a little bit. Not to say that he's it's not the right yeah, yes. It's not to I say it's not that. the right amount, but compared to other actors in the show, because like we said, it's almost everyone else has like this Leslie Nielsen type straight face delivery and he's and, and whereas Burt Ward is like over the top but it, yeah. it does work though it does work for the but show he's a funky kid yeah and I love like how he's always punching his hand and he's eager like I love that yeah, yeah he plays that well yeah. Josh what do you think about Burt Ward yeah he's great um whenever I see like uh uh 
Robin in like the tidy whities I hear his voice. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like in in like the 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 red underwear with like the the like beige tights or whatever, uh, and the cape. Like it's always holy smokes, Batman! Like it's yeah. that. That's pretty good. Yeah, he he's great. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, two more to go. Let's. We've mm-hmm. already talked about him a lot, but let's talk about Frank Gorshin. We pretty much all agree he's a genius. Um, yeah. I think, like I said, he is perfect for this role he inv- he pretty much invented the role um and like i said if he if riddler was in a movie today he could play it just like this and be perfect yeah, uh, his body language the way he stands the way he's always oh, he kind like, of it's like oh like gangly and yeah. he scuttles around yeah yeah it's yeah. so well done um the like this the way he throws the way he walks the way he Mm-hmm. Uh, everything it's it's a it's a great performance and like he we does said, this like kick thing too sometimes when he like when he's like standing there and he goes he kind of does like yeah. a kick and then up it's yeah yeah he's very animated and uh i think too the reason why he's so scary is because he's so like cartoony and animated so when he like shifts into that like serious like scary wiggler it's Good like point. almost jarring especially when everybody else is doing like the corny, oh, geez, Batman, what's yep. going to happen? When he switches, it's like, oof, that's creepy. You know what? That's a great point because unlike most of the other actors, he actually looks a little bit like a tough. He's not Cesar Romero. He's not Burgess Meredith, like a gentleman. He looks like he could actually be like a street thug, right? <laughs> right. I think that's <laughs> partly why. Uh, Cousin Brandon, what do you think of Frank Gorshin? So he, he's... <laughs> He seems like a drunk on laughing gas to me. And like, I don't know. I don't know how to put it, but he is he is agreeably creepy. Like for instance, like when when he's um, when they break into the art gallery thing, whatever, and then it turns out that he gives them the lawsuit. The way he moves and knocks over that vase. Do you remember that big vase? Yes. Yeah. Like, like it's re- it's he's so in character in a way that it's like uh-huh. damn, like he really went for it. So I, I, I appreciate that about him. I was like, well, pretty great. Hundred uh, percent agree. Now, before we move on to the final actor, you guys know that for at least a couple episodes, Frank Gorshin did not play the Riddler, right? Yeah, there's oh, some really? the other guy. It's it was really? the it was the actor who played Gomez in Adam's family. Right, yeah, because he yes. had a mustache. Interesting. Yep. Uh, <laughs> John Aston. Not that- as good. That's so weird because he does oh, man, return man. for the movie. Yes, he's in the uh, Frank Orson's in the movie, and then he's also in season three. But in between, wow, in parts of season three or two, it's it's John Aston. It's I did really not remember weird. that at yep. all. Just like Julie Newmar was oh. Catwoman, and then oh, Lee Merriweather yeah. was Catwoman in the you movie, make, and then Julie right. Newmar was Catwoman again. Then it was Eartha Kitt. Right. Interesting. Yeah, there was also three actors that played Mister Freeze. Uh, Joker and Penguin were always the same, and I think that's it for the rest of them. I think the rest were always the same. Man, I I love that the Joker, like uh, uh, Cesar Romero, wouldn't shave his mustache off, that. so they just yeah. painted over it. That's so yeah. great. See, to be honest, I mean, I we, we're not going to talk about all the actors, but Cesar Romero is <laughs> my least favorite of the big villains. <laughs> I would say probably. Yeah, yeah. he's I not like great. Him. I like that he's so goofy. And like all they needed, all they needed to do was have an episode where he stabs somebody and laughs maniacally. And I think like that would be your Joker, man. Like mm-hmm. you're like, oh, this guy's actually doing that stuff while being just Caesar Romero. <laughs> I think um, in the movie, it, it really shows how um, almost uh, uh, redundant the Joker is in the show because he's just the Riddler. Thank again. you. I said the same thing. Like he's just. Like- He's, I don't know. Character. Yeah, in the, in the show, in this show, the Joker is just kind of like the Riddler again, or maybe the reverse. I don't know how you want to put it, but right. um, I, when they're when they're even like making their plans in the movie, um, it's in the movie. It's bad. It's um, the Joker, Riddler, Penguin and Catwoman. Catwoman and four right. of them team up and they decide 
it's if they team up all together, they'll finally be able to de- defeat Batman. So when they come up with their evil plan, the Riddler's like the brains. The Penguin is like doing all this like techie stuff, and he's got all of his goons and the the submarine and all that. And Catwoman plays a part because she's pretending to be somebody else and yeah. Batman and all. And the Joker's just like, <laughs> like he doesn't do anything. That's a great point. So yeah, that's like the one weird thing with the show. You're right, is that even in the movie, Penguin was kind of the leader because it was Penguin right. submarine, right? Mm-hmm. And like you said, Catwoman had all that stuff to do with disguising herself. So. Yeah, that's maybe the one weak part of the show is they didn't quite know how to play the Joker. Mm. It's but, because they couldn't be brutal enough. Probably, could yeah. be, yeah, yeah, could yeah, be yeah, for All sure. All right, I just want yeah. can I just add though? By the way, the only reason the Penguin was my favorite on the show is because I loved Burgess Meredith. Yes, because uh, and uh, particularly because I'm the biggest Twilight Zone fan. Yes, <laughs> and he's in two of my favorite episodes of the Twilight Zone, so. I love Burgess Meredith. I so. I love his penguin. Yeah, so good. So good. yeah he's love Burgess Meredith. And again, we're not going to talk about all the actors, but we can all agree we all love Julie Newmar. I'm sure. Yep. Julie yeah, but Newmar she's is, no Eartha Kitt. Uh, I like Julie Newmar more personally. Oh, well, I like Eartha Kitt more. <laughs> um, <laughs> Eartha Kitt's Catwoman is definitely one of my first brushes when I realized that I wasn't like the other girls. <laughs> ah. And I was like, I was like, what do you yeah, she's pretty, but like in a in a not that not not just what you think way. <laughs> well see, for me, Julie Newmar, she was like I always, you know, there was I always thought girls were pretty when I was a little kid, but Julie Newmar was the first one where I, I that gave me strange stirrings in my utility belt. Let's put it that way. You know, like oh, wow. Julie Newmar was something else. Mine was Thank a little bit more. Thank you guys so much for listening to the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, just so you know, Julie Newmar was also on the Twilight. Really interesting. She, yeah, she's I'm in like, four, uh, of late. I think of Clifferville. Go watch it. She's she's in the. I will. She the so. Also, jo- GI Jolie and I interviewed Julie Newmar. No. Yes, oh. I will find it and I will send what? it to you. Huh? That's. Holy yeah, she was great. She was lovely. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. I enjoyed that I was trying to talk about like a young gay child realizing that they're that they're different. And Mike's like, yeah, but what about my penis? <laughs> what about it? Oh, wait. Did, did, were you not done talking? Sorry. Go ahead, Becca. Oh, boy. Excuse me. <laughs> Becca was having a moment and I trampled all over it. Sorry, Becca. Now what else is new? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, At least you skipped me this time. We still have one more actor to talk about. Yeah, and I'm after, thinking about her as a kid. No, the, the the absolute genius actor that holds this whole thing together, and that's Adam West as Batman. I mean, what else can you say about him? He's now rightly considered a legend. Um, he had a long time where he didn't get any other acting roles, but then he came back as, um, was he the mayor in um, Family Guy? Yeah. Mayor yeah. West, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, he, was, he did he did voice acting in the Bat- Batman the animated series as the Gray Ghost. I mean, if anything, that voice. There's no one on earth that could do that voice the way he did. And again, play it as straight as he did. Right? Like mm-hmm. he is a godsend, Adam West. I don't know what else you can say about him. Anyone, feel free to jump in. Yeah, I think it. The reason it works is um, uh, Batman never says any jokes. Like he, right. he always plays it straight, even when the things that he's saying are funny. It's like he 100 percent believes it. And Adam West, I feel like when he's playing that role, Adam West believes everything yes. he's saying. Right. Like he's <laughs> totally bought into it. Yeah, uh, it's it's yeah, it's fantastic. I don't think. Anybody else could do this. I agree like, like this. It's 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 be if if anybody else was cast as Batman um for this show it wouldn't be the same like it would be a different version of batman completely i think uh, you're right yep so he's yeah the only he's person i could think about like during this time period essentially he wouldn't have had the right build but i think he would have played it so straight with a different but similar delivery william shatner i knew you were gonna say that i knew yeah. you were gonna say that mm-hmm. yep I, like I'm saying, I think he would have played it straight. Yeah. And if the delivery would have been sort of iconic as well. But 
I don't think he would have had the right bill. Now, granted, Adam West looks like this. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's not yeah. like Jack. <laughs> right. In the bat suit and be like, thank God, a superhero here. <laughs> also, I, I bet you if most of the actors today playing superheroes would probably almost look like that. Like a lot of their suits are padded now, right? Like they're, yeah. they make yeah. them look big and bulky. Right. Uh, especially when you put like the spandex over top, it doesn't form around every mm. like right. pack and, and you know, six pack and all that. So, but I don't know. I should say, I just watched Morbius and that was hot shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's another story. Yeah. Um, we've talked right. about Morbius too much. I'm never yeah. talking about it again. Oh my god. Uh Mark. Bex Luthor, what do you think of Adam West? Um I I don't think I like him as much as you guys. I think I like wow. him. But I just I think because for me this show is about the villains, like 110%. Yeah. And like obviously I think Adam West is great at his mm-hmm. position, but I am not watching the show for Adam West. I am mm-hmm. watching the show for Catwoman and Penguin and Joker and Riddler Just and Freeze agree. and all of the, them, which is also one of the reasons I read Batman <laughs> comics. I typically don't read Batman comics for Batman. I read for mm. all of his supported characters. So well, I think that's just me personally. That's also, I don't like the suit. Oh, <laughs> I think the suit is so perfect. Like I hate the mask. <laughs> I think it's great. Can I? It doesn't can I have, line up with his eyes. I hate it. Can I say that in, when I was 13 years old or 12 or whatever, and they announced the new Batman movie, I was shocked that they were redesigning his costume. Like, why would they redesign Adam West's <laughs> costume? It makes no sense. I don't know if that one would have worked for no, no Batman. But but you know what though? To be fair, James Gunn has proven you can do like straight one-to-one adaptations of cheesy superhero costumes and make them work right like peacemaker and that whole thing and the suicide squad i think it, i think it's time to bring back some of these ridiculous spandex costumes but that's just me i think I mean, it, the reason sorry go ahead uh, oh i think we're becca and i are kind of on the same we're page just... here like i think that it works so well in this and in peacemaker because they're like almost self-aware yeah how ridiculous it is so in some instances, I don't think it would work. Like, I, like Robert Pattinson should not be in. No, the blues no, grace, I know, you know? I know. But, um, but I agree. I think that they could definitely play it up in like Marvel. I think Marvel's like, like all all of the MCU movies is like a perfect balance of like mm-hmm. self aware and also able to kind of be ridiculous. So if they they right. could totally bump up that like comics accurate costumes and and get away with it i think well we we should also like it, let's remember that catwoman at this time she either had her purple remember her purple and green costume with the long dress yeah or she or she might have had that weird cat pattern costume they were all terrible this show might have been the first one to give her the all black bodysuit that later mm. became her permanent costume right like mm. again they they had the right idea, I think, with the show. She's gone through a lot of costumes, though. Yeah. There was, yeah. like, before she got the solid black one, even, she had, like, the one with the the tail and the whiskers. Right. And then there was the one with the, the purple one that I like that you hate. Ooh. Jim <laughs> Bel- Belent or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. 90s. 90s Catwoman. And then now she's, like, been in the black Catwoman costume since then. Right, right. Um, well, okay, we're going to wrap it up in a few minutes, but I mean, again, one more thing, the, the, the theme song, the theme song that apparently partially inspired the Beatles with their song Taxman, which has almost the exact same chorus, recorded oh, wow. only months later, yeah, so hmm. there's so many things about the show. We've talked about the costumes, the, the music, the writing, um, again, Batman probably has the best rogues gallery of any superhero, right? Mm -hmm. um by far and this show helped make all of those characters household names like again people know lex Luthor, but that's kind of it whereas batman the average person on the street can probably name five to ten villains easily right and it's partly because of this show i think so Mm -hmm. i mean again um 
We're, we're going to review at least 50 or more properties on this show, but this is probably going to end up being one of the best. I think we'll all agree on that. Well, that's right? kind of depressing then. It's all downhill <laughs> from here, Becca. Um, now, the next question uh, is, Cousin Brandon, would you be interested in appearing in a future episode of Taped Crusaders? Nah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, of course. Uh, okay, before we wrap up, do you have a, a, a favorite character like that you'd like to see uh, the you you'd like to help us review? What do you mean by favorite character? I'm, well, for, like, I, well, for, for, we're, we're doing every Marvel and DC TV show ever, as well as every Marvel and DC um, movie yeah. for nineteen ninety nine. So, well, I mean, the, the, like. The three that come to mind, if it's all live action, obviously it's, it would be um, Spider Man, The Incredible Hawk, and Wonder Woman. I mean, those are the three that I can. All right. Of. Guess what I'm doing right now? I'm hitting copy and paste. Would you say Spider Man, Incredible Hulk, and what's the other one? Wonder Woman. All right. We'll be in touch. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what's funny? Those three episodes are exactly in a row, so you'll have a busy month, okay? Oh, Jesus. Hey, perfect. <laughs> you don't want to. You don't want to review the Shazam TV show with us. Hard <laughs> pass. Yeah, I don't want to review Shazam it either. <laughs> oh, dude, his like mentor follows him around in a van. It's the worst. <laughs> Have you seen this, Mike? Oh yes, when I was a kid. Yep. Whoa. It's, it's bad. <laughs> There's a lot of fun stuff. Uh, all I remember up. is that he's in a van. That's all yeah, I remember. This is going to be great. It's going to be great. Okay, <laughs> so we should have you back. Thank you so much for joining us, Cousin Brandon. Thanks uh, for having me. As always. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Bex Luthor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for yeah. uh, stealing yeah. your thunder there. I won't well, do... <laughs> I don't care about that. I'm just upset that we have to review Shazam. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, and uh, Josh, you can take it from here. Yeah, thank you guys so much for listening to our podcast. You can check us out over on our website at thecomicbooksyndicate.com. You can also find our YouTube channel at the same name. Um, if you want to find any of our, our other podcasts, you can find them wherever podcasts are found. I almost said wherever they're sold. These are free, guys. <laughs> uh, Don't tell them that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Does that mean I'm not getting paid? Yeah, ooh, unfortunately. Sorry, Becca. I um, have been waiting on my checks for a couple of years, but I thought maybe it was just, you know, <laughs> just delayed. We're 176 yeah. weeks behind. Sorry. Good night, uh, everybody. Uh,